Okay. Just uh, to bring us back up to speed. I think we did this closed system entropy balance. On, uh, on uh, I don't know, whatever that was, Wednesday. Wednesday, and that's the, the deal that change in entropy, which is, remember now, a property, which means we can define it at any state point, as long as we know enough things to identify that state point, then we can uh, uh, establish those points. And that's the... Uh, Entropy due to heat transfer at the boundary. And then the fact that there are most likely irreversibilities present, so there is the generation of an entropy in a system. If we have a, a fully reversible adiabatic system, well, if it's adiabatic, I guess the heat transfer doesn't make much difference. If we have a fully reversible process, though, uh, then there won't be any reversibilities. We wouldn't have a, a, that generation term. And in fact, it's that generation term that can allow us to determine the degree of reversibility of a system. We do expect that generating uh, entropy generation will be greater than zero uh, if irreversibilities are present. And again, that can even be a, a, a test for it, I guess. Um, you don't really need to test to see if a process is reversible because real processes aren't. What we do need to test for at times, though, is that there might be claims of a particular process, and those claims are impossible because of uh, negative uh, entropy generation once calculated. Okay, so a little bit of a, a warm-up pro problem here, just to get us uh, going. So we have water in a piston cylinder. set up, insulated, and with uh, some kind of stirring mechanism in there. Just to, just to mix things up a little bit. Thing. You chemistry guys are okay with this, or do you need some fancy, fan, fancy gizmo thing where it spins a little magnet on the bottom? You want one of those? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right. Starts at 150 degrees saturated vapor. Wait, let me see. Is that right? Saturated vapor. Nope. Saturated liquid. Oh, shut up. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're still back on this little thing here. All right. Uh, and and uh, here's where the kind of thing might not be obvious. If you stir this enough, you can stir it to saturated vapor. That's not, that's not just frothing it up like you would if you were making custard or a, a latte, which they don't have at Stewart's. Well, it's just some cheap coffee there. Whoa, and whoa. angry people. Whoa. Hey, angry, hey. Coffee. angry, Good. angry right? Would you go in there for coffee either? Ice cream is the only thing. Ice cream. Ice cream. And they don't even have the hazelly, heavenly hazelnut because they discontinued that. Looked for it. Communist. Kind of was like it. I couldn't find it. Specifically for you, though. It went out. It went out. 
because they, they, they killed that six years ago. When you were still, when you couldn't even see over the counter yet, and your, your little uniform hat fell down the hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny picture. <laughs> Fiona. <laughs> what? You want some cigarettes? And then you, then you a little six-year-old poopy eye. Yeah. <laughs> should be so disappointed. I think we should All right. Camper, right? <laughs> good enough. Good enough. All right. So this is done uh, uh, reversibly as well. Reversibly compressed. I mean, sorry. Reversibly. Uh, well, I don't know. It's not expanded or compressed. It's just a phase change. But done so reversibly. So, let's, uh, before we do that calculation, let's look at it on a, a PV diagram and a TS diagram. That's now... Uh, it's going to be one of the more useful ones. You know, one of the diagram. It's on the diagram get three. So, what do these processes look like? Well, I'm sorry, I said reversibly, but we're 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 looking to find the. Uh, the, uh, I need to put down what we find. If I put that down, I would have realized it's not reversible. We're looking for the work done on that paddle wheel, and we're looking for the uh, entropy generation. So that fixes it being reversible. Huh. Which we also would have realized in a second. Well, we'll see who would have realized that. That wouldn't quite work with the diagram. What's the PV diagram going to look like? Assuming a nice, slick moving piston there, there's not going to be any pressure change, and we're going from one side of the dome to the other. Remember the, the pre, uh, temperature line looks something like that. And on the TS diagram, what does it look like? Let somebody else guess, Paul. You like these diagrams. I'll give you the poopy eye and shut you up. The six-year-old poopy eye. Well, don't forget, we're going from saturated liquid to saturated vapor, so we have to go from one side of the dome to the other. That's going to be very difficult if the line is vertical. Now, that's the first place where I would have caught when I caught it reversible, because if it's reversible and adiabatic, then it's also isentropic, and that would be a vertical line, and then there's no way we could have done that phase change from liquid to vapor. You think so? You're going to speak up, you know. Uh, you were talking. I didn't want to talk over you. Why? Everybody does. <laughs> Students even sometimes just look at me and tell me to shut up. <laughs> but you wouldn't. You're too polite. Yeah. I appreciate that. That's why you're my favorite student. You get an A. You just go. <laughs> Again, this is the same thing. Um, we go right across the dome. Uh, like that from one to two. So this is, can't be reversible and adiabatic um, because there's the, the only way to do this is get a, a, some kind of uh, uh, entropy increase. Now, if you remember, we did a problem that had these very same diagrams on Wednesday, but at that time, we took the area underneath on the PV diagram to be network. the work done, not the network because this isn't a cycle, uh, to be the work done. Well, I guess it could be the network because we'd have work here and work at the piston face. Um, 
we can't do that on this one. Remember what the area was on this one as well? Yeah, that was the heat transfer, but we don't have any heat transfer. So that right there tells you that this time, the area under the diagrams do not represent the work or the heat transfer. Why not? What was the difference between Wednesday's problem and this problem? Even though the diagrams are the same. This one's not reversible, it's as simple as that. If it's reversible, the area under the diagrams does give us the heat transfer and the, and the work, but this is an irreversible process. Uh, another way we could have determined is uh, uh, it's not a reversible process. You can't imagine turning off that little paddle wheel, letting the system return back to liquid, the piston would drop and the wheel would start spinning the other way and charge back up the, the battery or whatever is running the motor. So it couldn't have been reversible. All right, so I want you to find then the uh, work and the entropy generation. Uh, and the entropy generation we can just do from, from uh, well, it's going to come even easier than that because it's just properties you can look up. Temperature, we have phase change, so we go to our favorite table. Actually, our favorite table is that one over in the corner of the current stewards where they still have that ashtray that they'll put there for you. That, that's our favorite one. Because that's also out of sight of the counter people who give you that poopy eye. Yeah. So we need uh, we need uh, some values at 150 degrees. Way down here on the bottom. There you go. If you don't have your book, there it is right there. So for the work, we can use the first law flow system, so it'll be delta U. Couple things are zero, obviously. It's insulated. We'll assume it's not racing across the uh, landscape. So, the work we can get directly from the uh, change in internal energy. And those are right in the table.
degrees. That sounds like the temperature in the morning in Hawaii. That's that morning <laughs> swim when you get up. About the 30 in the morning. <laughs> Any later, it won't be morning. But I know how those Mai Tais go down. Some dangies and wailing. He's done. Okay? Alright, just pulling those numbers right out of the table. Don't forget that, that convenient column, that SG, which uh, we can use. So the, uh, the work is negative. Make sense? What is it? 1927.4? Make sense it's negative? Because okay, we're, we're doing we're doing work on this system. And then the uh, entropy generation is uh, just the 499. See, so this stuff's not hard. I don't know what you were talking about when you said it was kicking the butt yesterday. That just doesn't make any sense. Okay. Everybody all right with that one? Bill, okay? All right, let's look at another one. Because in this one we can actually use that uh, entropy generation business as a bit of a design point on it. So imagine there's R134A, also in a piston cylinder device. Where the divide, the uh, the gas, the R134A is compressed. This also is adiabatic. So it's insulated. Let's see. Do we have the amount? No, not on this one. So we'll do it on a per kilogram basis. Compressed from saturated vapor at 10 degrees C. Yep. To 100 kilopascals. Oh, sorry, thousand. To a thousand kilopascals. find the minimum theoretical work. Or maybe the theoretical minimum work. Theoretical. Okay, which is a, a I don't think we've necessarily had before. <clears throat> the idea with that is doing this on a TS diagram. Where do we start? Where would I place the first state point? Do we know enough to actually place it? Remember, we need two intensive independent properties at any time to fix a state point. Do we have that? Where do we start? We start at 10 degrees, so that's no sweat, wherever that falls on this uh, little chart here. We're over at the very right side of the dome at saturated vapor. 
So that's point one. Sorry, because quality one. That's the that's the second independent property. Um, just saying it's a saturated vapor is is good enough as an intensive property because that's such a specific condition of the uh, of the system. Then what happens? I figure I have to do the minimum theoretical work, which means we can consider a reversible process, since that's a theoretical process. That would give us an idea of what's the absolute minimum work we could expect to do, and then anything more than that will be the, the reality of the situation. But what's it look like on a TS diagram? If we're looking for the minimum theoretical, then it can be reversible. It's also adiabatic. If it's both reversible and adiabatic, then it's also isentropic. So we know the possible the, that what we're looking for is a second state point somewhere along a vertical line. So the question then for you to finish the diagram is are we going to go up that line? or down that line to the second point. In fact, what we've got here, if we are looking at a reversible adiabatic process, this line actually divides us in, uh, divides the possible uh, real, real places we could go. Anything to the right here is an accessible state meaning that with a real process where entropy will be generated, we can end up somewhere to the right with a real process. Over here is inaccessible. As long as we're talking about uh, reversible processes, the fact that it's adiabatic puts it right on the line. So we're looking for that one state point that falls right on the line, knowing that if we really did this process with irreversibility present, we could land up somewhere to the right of that. But then the question still remains, do we tend to do we expect to finish above point one or below point one with this compression? What? Above? Why do you think above? Because Trevor agrees with you? Do you know Trevor? Yeah. Yeah. It's awful far apart. It's the only Bill's the only one you hate worse. <laughs> Actually, I didn't even know he was in the class. Who's, the class <laughs> who's who who is wearing burrito scented aftershave? Well, that's that smells good. Not you? Oh no, you smell like cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it smell like burritos in here all of a sudden? Is that chemistry there finally doing something decent? Smells <laughs> 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 good. No, it does. It's not. It's over here. What's going on? Malcolm, what flavor do you have here today? Is it burrito? That would be good. I'd drink that. <laughs> All right. You think we go up? that isentropic line. And why? Well, it's being compressed, but how does that tell us it goes up the line? Yeah, the, remember the pressure lines, constant pressure lines look something like that and increase as we go. So we've got to go to a higher pressure. You can also imagine as you compress this, that gas is going to get a lot harder, hotter. That's what gases do. Trevor can, can confirm that for us from pumping up bicycle tires. When you do that, those bicycle pumps get very, very hot. So we know that, plus, plus it'd be pretty strange if we compressed it and 
vapor and, and liquid started coming out of the out of the solution. Uh, well, it's not really a solution. So we're going to go up here somewhere. Now we'll call that point two s, indicating it's a point of constant uh, where the process was isentropic. In reality, we're going to go some place up to the same pressure and it'll be somewhere to the right. We put a dotted line because uh, isentropic processes, we know the process line that's taken. Uh, re real processes with full re irreversibilities, we're not exactly sure of the path that's taken in those processes. So we're looking for the minimum th theoretical work Q is zero, already assuming, because I didn't even write them down, that kinetic energy and potential energy are zero. But then how do we use that? We need to find here U2 and U1. U1 is pretty easy, we're right on the dome, but how do we find point two? U1 is easy right there on the dome. So that's U um, G at 10 degrees C. How do we find U2 so we can find the maximum, sorry, the minimum theoretical work? It'll be in superheat because we're up above the dome on the right there. But remember we need two independent intensive properties. We have one because we're told the pressure. And we know pressure and temperature are independent outside the dome, but all we have is the pressure. So what's our second independent intensive property to fix state point two? Once we fix, sorry, two S, once we fix point, fix state point two S, put an S on that one, um, once we fix that point, we can look up the internal energy and finish the problem. We can find the minimum theoretical work. But we got to fix that point two. We can fix this state point two with the two intensive properties. One is the pressures given, and two, the fact that it's isentropic. So S2S equals S1. So we can find S1 from the first state point, use that to establish the second state point. R134A, be careful, it's really easy to use the wrong tables. So we'll start with the temperature table, saturated temperature table, just to get the, the first state point. So we want table A11. Our second favorite table, this is the one we'll memorize after we're done memorizing the water table. And we're at 10 degrees. Now don't forget, when you look this up, you're going to need S1 to use as the entropy at the second point, so you might as well do it while you've got the same thing here. I think that looks like it. So we need uh, we need UG two thirty five point seven. Right, we're in S on units yet. Forget anybody. If, you, if you're missing where we're coming up with these numbers, make sure you ask.
We also need S1 at that because that's going to be our second intensive property for the second point. So while you got it open, you might as well read it. So that's also SG, which is uh, 92641. Everybody reading those same points? If you don't have your own table, at least you're familiar with getting them off of mine. We agree on that? So that's also the entropy for our second state point. And we need that to find the internal energy of the second state point. So we're in superheat, so we go to the 134A superheat table, we have the pressure, so we go there, what is that, that's uh, 1,000 kilopascals or 1 megapascal, and that's the only thing we know the superheat, other than the fact that we're in between 92, we're in between these, the second and the third one on that line. Which, if we scooch it over, there we go. Our entropy is somewhere between these two points because it's the same entropy there was on uh, state point one. We're at this second pressure here, the 1,000 kilopascals. So we've just gone up that line to the pressure. We know we're somewhere in between here, in between these two. So to find the, uh, the, the point between there, we sort of have to find the percentage we are between the two. So we can do it by just calculating the difference between the point we've got there. Actually, it would be a better way to do it, because then we can just add it straight on. Uh, we're doing um, the 91.79 minus the value we have. We're trying to find where that lays in this little interval, and then the size of that interval. sometimes too if you want. It's about about 25%, meaning we're about 25% from this value up to that value, which means we'll be, uh, the temperature's off the back, but we'll be 25% between those two temperatures, uh, the 40 and the 50 on the other side. Doesn't that come out to be about that? Is that what you got? That's the interpolation. That's what Ease and some other online software things will do for you automatically. It's nothing more than assuming that uh, between the two state points we know things vary linearly. They don't quite, but it's pretty darn close. That tells us that we're at uh, 12.45 degrees C. We don't need that kind of uh, precision, but at least this makes the numbers match up. Now that just tells us where we are between the two points that happen to be on the table. Oh, sorry, not 12. It'd be uh, 42.25 degrees. Is that right? Because 
we're about 20 per, uh, we're about 24 percent of the way along between 40 and 50 degrees. So it's pretty easy to just add it there when they're in jumps of 10. We assume if we're 24 percent of the way from this one to this one on the entropy that we're also that far on the internal energy. So we do the same then interpolation there to get from one point to the other. So we have a gap of 260.94 minus 251.30 and we're 24.5% of the way along that. That's all we're saying with this interpolation. And then we add that to the bottom of the gap because we're just, we're just saying we're 24% of the way along there. So we figure out the gap size, figure out what 24% is, and then add up to the bottom number, 251.30. And that will give us U2S. And you can ballpark these numbers. That's a gap of about 10, so we'll be about 25% of the way across that. We're going to be somewhere around 253, give or take a little bit. And if you're in a hurry, that kind of estimation is just fine. That should come out to about 253.7. And now we can figure out the minimum theoretical work done now that we have those two numbers. Uh, two thirty five seven. Comes out to be what? Eighteen. All right. on the system. We still have a negative over here. So this negative is from our sign convention of the heat transfer and the work being in the opposite directions when they're positive. So our theoretical work done on the system is the 18 kilojoules per kilogram. In reality, we're going to have to do a little bit more work than that because of the irreversibilities, but that'll at least give you the minimum, the design minimum, if you will. Questions about that one? See, that's kind of the nice thing about ease, is it'll do this interpolation automatically for you. All you have to do is uh, uh, when you tell it to find the internal energy, you put in the two independent properties on the command call of 1,000 kPa for the pressure, and you can just say that the, uh, that the entropy is, uh, is equal to S1. You don't even have to put the value in, just put S2 equals S1 on the command call. Oh, by the way, that's something like maybe you'd have a, a, you know we're looking for this internal energy all you have to do is put int energy internal energy remember you have to say what the fluid is then you have to say what the two independent properties are that you know so you put P1 equals a thousand kp actually you probably P is you just put p equals p1 is what you probably do is so something as simple as that and you say s equals s1 um, you might want to plot these and remember to plot things you need to have them as your array variables so maybe you do this that would work a little bit better we don't we don't 
often plot and do, but you might want to plot it to, as it changes. Remember, don't do this for the work on the heat transfer because those only apply between two points, not at a particular point. And this is does nothing more than sticks this in the array table. So it's available for plotting. Okay, questions about that before we look at open systems? Okay, we haven't quite done, I don't think, open system entropy balance. property, if mass flows in, then entropy flows in. So we'd sum all of those up at any heat transfer uh, coming in and any mass coming in. And then of course we deduct from that any entropy going in the opposite direction. which looks exactly the same. Only done at all outlets, however many there may be. Now, this really isn't anything different than we did on the energy balance, but when we did this on the energy balance, after we looked at what's coming in and what's going out, then we knew that to be what's changing in the total amount of the system. But we have a different term with entropy because we do have entropy being generated. So we have to add on that term, and then we can say, that we've got an entropy balance on the system as a whole, on, on the control volume as a whole. If processes are reversible, But for our for our common ones, we will look at one inlet, one outlet, and steady state. For most of our problems, we're not doing transient problems, uh, steady state problems. The steady state problem means that the entropy 
entropy change of the system is zero. The, the total entropy in the system will not change. Whatever entropy flows in, flows back out. And so our picture becomes the net entropy due to heat transfer plus m dot s1 minus s2. s1 is the inlet and that was plus s2 is the outlet that had the minus so that's why they're in a, a, a different order than we usually find there plus whatever entropy is generated in the system due to irreversibilities. So that's our, our main entropy balance um, picture there for open systems. Let's have a smoke. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> he smokes a pipe anyway, because he's, he's kind of a mean guy, and mean guys smoke pipes. Anyway, you can use this if you'd like, or you can forget this. It's entirely up to you, since you make stuff up as you go along anyway. The temperature of the turbine is at about an average of 350 K. And the ambient temperature, so I'll call that T infinity, and you can do that right on ease, is about 293. So the turbine's hot and losing some heat. This is not an adiabatic turbine. So I want you to find the No, it won't be on a rate basis. Find the, it'd be on a kilogram <coughs> basis, on a mass basis. Find the entropy generation in this, uh, in this system. On a TS diagram, that's going to look something like this. We start at superheat somewhere, come down to saturated vapor. The isentropic process is that, but because this is a real process with entropy generation, it's going to go something like that. We know it goes down to saturated vapor. So that will be 0.2. And then if that's a line of constant pressure, 0.2s will be somewhere in there. Not that you need it on this one necessarily, since you don't know the quality of 0.2s. But that's the that's at least the picture. Okay, so what you're looking for is this entropy generation term there. Uh, this is a slightly different form because this is on a total rate basis. We need it on a we need it on a per mass basis. So you just have to recast this equation in that way, on a per mass basis. We can put a minus in there and then make this delta S. So that would be the equation there then that you would need. And that should get out of class question, which is pointless since you can get up and walk away anytime you want anyway. But this is a real challenge. Think of, think of how impressed everybody else in the class will be if you get it and go or You can go down to check in at the airport. Because definitely they're going to pull you over for it. An extra look see put you in that that full body scanner. He's carrying something. Huh? You don't have to up here. Yeah. Like, hey, test that. He looks so young. He doesn't look like he's No, he, with that haircut, he looks like he's hiding something. Oh my god. <laughs> Bill, do us a favor though. Would you test that rumor we're all hearing that box cutters are okay now and then? <laughs> <laughs> and report back? Wouldn't you like to know? I'd like to know. Yeah, that's, in fact, I think everybody know, wouldn't mind chipping in some extra credit for you. I mean, I'll, I'll throw in 250,000 points right there. How about you? Throw in a, 10 points right here. <laughs> What kind of boxes are you going to cut with that? <laughs> no, no, you test it. No, 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 no. you got to test it for us. Look, everybody be quiet. Phil's working. Anybody need a set of tables? Anybody come unprepared? Why don't you just go steal it from my office? 
It's only by now you have your own key. Look at there's there's turbines and compressors on here. There's pumps. There's home plate. Pretty easy. The delta S should be pretty easy since you do have two independent properties for point one. You do have two independent properties for point two. So this is a, a straight look up out of the tables. Remember the S gen is what we're looking for. So the only other part you need is the heat transfer at a particular temperature. some way to come up with a heat transfer and a heat transfer that remember that's heat transfer across the boundary and this is the boundary temperature the average boundary temperature so that's why we needed that number there so we have to come up with some way to come up with a heat transfer multiply by 100 that's a good try there you go. Just, that's easy. And if it works, you're out of here. We still got 20 minutes to go, 19 to go before somebody gets out early. There's a little bill. Whoever gets out early, I will give them enough extra credit points that you can then pass those to Bill as your donation for the box cutter exercise.
exactly it. How are we going to find Q? given 
Delta H you can look up at the same time you look up delta S. And the KE term all you have to do with that is watch the units. That's the hardest part. So from that you can find then K, uh, sorry, Q, and then Q at the boundary temperature and you'll be able to find S K. H two 
minus H1, I got 2675.6. Sound right? Yeah? 32317. And that's all kilojoules per kilogram. Now that's going to be negative. Does that make sense? Yeah, one of the main things a turbine does to produce work is take energy from the fluid stream. So it makes sense that's negative. 556.1. Remember, this is all just to find that Q term. Delta KE with a one half. V2 squared and V1 squared. Don't forget the conversion at one kilojoule. In fact, you should write this down. Is a thousand meters squared per second squared. So when you put that in with the half and square the velocities, you should get. Anybody have KE? Just to check it. Delta KE. Huh? Minus 7.8 kilojoules per kilogram. Remember the fluid is slowing down, so it's losing a lot of kinetic energy. And so then Q is W, which is 540. Minus 556.1 minus 7.8, which should be should be negative. We expect the turbine to be losing heat since it's hotter than the surroundings. That should be 23.9. And if you messed up a minus sign, you won't get that number. And then delta S. So I got it right so I can go. I 
get out of class. Okay, you get that number? Okay, you can go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. 45 seconds. 40 seconds. Go, man. Go, go, go. Leave your books. I don't want to go back to work. I'm taking my time. <laughs> Make sense? Let's step through it. Always makes sense once you step through it, doesn't it? That's true. Yeah. I know. Thermo's that way. It makes no sense well, until somebody shows you, well, here's how you do it. You go, oh, <laughs> no, it wasn't that hard. No, no, no. no, I had a negative first. I didn't work out. But watch those negative signs. 